Perfect. Thank you so much, um, Yo, and welcome everyone to the second graduation call of the third cohort of Open Life Science. Um, we are very excited to have all of you joining us here today on Zoom and also hi to all of you on YouTube. Welcome. <laughs> so um, we are using a uh, pad for uh, note taking today and um, as I was saying, um, please do sign in project leads uh, who are presenting as well as all our friends and family. It's really lovely to see you all today. Um, just before we start, um, a reminder that the code of conduct for Open Life Science operates in this call. So if you experience or witness any unacceptable behavior or have any other concerns, please do report this by contacting one of the organizers, Berenice, Malvika, Yo, and myself at team at openlifescience.org. If you would like to report an issue specifically to one of us, then please feel free to email one of us individually. Um, and our emails are on line 20 in the patch. Okay, so we have quite a few presentations today. Um, we're always <laughs> gonna be running short on time. So we're gonna be quite strict with the um, timing of the presentation. I believe if I'm not wrong, you each have five minutes. Thank you, Yo. <laughs> Um, so at five minutes, I will make a very loud, rude noise <laughs> to um, warn you that this is going to, uh, you will have to stop as soon as possible. And um, then we will, if time allow, open the floor to questions. During the presentations, if you have questions for the presenters, please do put them down in the relevant section of the patch. And we will be doing the presentations in the order indicated on the roll call. Did I cover everything? Perfect. Oh, sorry, I did not. Um, there is an auto transcription operating for this call. Um, I think there is a link um, to the, if you're on Zoom on the top left of your live stream, uh, of your Zoom window, it says live custom live streaming services, and then you can click it and there should be, did I get that right? I hope I got that right. Uh, um, yeah, and if you're on YouTube, there will be a link for you soon in the chat, I believe, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and on the pad as well. All right, without further ado, um, first we will have Marta and uh, Santi and Iris. Whenever you're ready. Hello, I go to share my screen. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, well, for the first, uh, we want to, uh, Thanks to Joyce to be our <laughs> mentor. Uh, she uh, she was uh, really good and uh, he, he, she guided us uh, in the ways of science, open science and open software. <laughs> and it was uh, great and amazing for me, especially. Uh, I, I'm delighted to present, to introduce my colleagues in this project. This is uh, the person on the right is Marta Marin. This is the Spanish coordinator from EATRIS. EATRIS is an research infrastructure, e research infrastructure in, in translational biomedicine or medicine, translational medicine. And in Spain, this is articulated by a research, a health research institute, sorry. Um, in the middle, Santiago Reyo, the, our guy, our cool guy, our open guy. <laughs> uh, he's the, the project manager in IDPath from, from uh, European projects. And, and he's uh, very interested in open science and of course uh, in uh, science in, in the health research institutes. He's participating in, in, in many projects in, in this uh, health research institute, uh, IDPath Health Research Institute. Uh, the Health Research Institute and the National Health of Institute, where Marta and I, we work, um, they have, um, both of them are related by, by uh, an accreditation. The Institute, of, the, the National Health Institute of Carlos III accre accredite, um, no, give an accreditation to the Health Research Institutes and IDPAF is one of them. So this is the, the relationship between uh, Marta and I and Santiago. And myself, 
is uh, I am Iri San Pedro. Uh, I'm the project manager from Orion Project. It's a uh, Horizon 2020 project uh, related with uh, open uh, RRA practice and uh, open science practice. And that's all. Uh, Marta, the floor is yours. Well, I think it, that the floor is oh, mine. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Sally, the floor is yours. Yes, if you next, can please. Next slide. Okay. okay. So, well, I try to present our problem is that uh, well, the hair researchers in in Spain, uh, where it's a group of people with have a very poor uh, understanding of open science, and that's the. Um, the main reason the open science is not fully adapted in, in Spain. I mean, there are mostly clinicians and nurses, and they are not used to and uh, to practice this kind of of behavior. I mean, uh, most uh, hospitals uh, and assistants uh, work is uh, doing almost in a military fashion. I mean, it's obey and perform as quickly as possible. So it's, it's difficult to, to reach to them. So Iris Ness, please. So uh, we want to, to reach them, uh, to engage them in, in this and also to, to make them uh, take responsibility of, of a modern way of, of practicing science, so uh, more open through an informative session uh, who may lead us to a uh, please uh, Iris next to a creation of a distribution link uh, list that uh, will enable us to um, to connect all of them and also to to the relevant officers in the health institutes in order to um, to provide a, a supporting network uh, that help us to to reach it to the, as many researchers as possible to, to promote open science. And I give the floor to Marta. <laughs> so to do so, uh, we've organized an event focused on European and national policies, publication and data management. I've seen in the audience Irache, who will be contributing also to this event. And it will be some talks and then some open space for discussion. If we go to the next slide, we have already identified, there's already 153 registered persons, half of them or most of them being or researchers or managers. So there is an interest, there is a need for something like that. Um, then if we go to the, so the, the idea or the next steps, because we are finishing our time, uh, it's to celebrate this session. Then after the seminar, the idea would be to identify those attendees that would like to continue with that work, to work together, to find best practice, to help um, each other to implement those those principles and then to create some toolbox for the researchers or managers to facilitate them the implementation of open science principles in the in the research. So, next the slide. So how can you contribute or how can you help us? Um, you could disseminate our work. Hopefully the QR will work. And um, this is to our page. And that's it. Hopefully you find it this our project interesting and we will we can be in contact if you want some more information or would like to know the feedback of this event. Thank you very much uh, to Marta, Santi and Iris. Wonderful work. Uh, round of virtual applause for the team. Um, folks, if you have a, if you have questions for them, um, please do leave them in the pad or in the Zoom chat. Um, I see already comments from folks saying that there are, it's really impressive that you already have 150, whoops, 150 people registered already. It's really incredible reach. Um, Laura says, love the QR code in the presentation. It's a great idea to get folks to engage. Um, uh, Arache, great to see the interest in the event. Very, very well done. Um, uh, Love the graphic style as well in the presentation and the idea of using the informative sessions to start connecting with the community. Um, really, really awesome, awesome to see all of your wonderful work. Just waiting for the questions to come in, comments as well. Yes, any more? Um, 
Meanwhile, maybe Simon um, can get ready for the next presentation. Okay, let me share my screen. Yep. Thank you. Oh. Okay, great. Um, I can get started, I guess. Uh, so I will be talking about my project, which I termed the Virtual Conference Management System, VCMS. And um, just to give you a, qu a quick rundown why I decided to develop this. Um, so I guess you all know pandemic and everything. So we have probably all attended the virtual event, such as this one today. And uh, if we kind of talk about academic conferencing, then uh, virtual conferences have many strengths. So for example, they are much more environmentally friendly than uh, going to a meeting in person. So I just looked up a number, for example, there's this meeting of the American Geophysical Union, and does just this meeting alone uh, released 80,000 tons of CO2. So it's the CO2 emission of a city like Edinburgh uh, in a single day. So it's quite a lot. And if you go fully virtual, that uh, you eliminate almost all of the carbon emissions related with travel and so on. So that's a, a pretty big argument for going virtual already. But also kind of if you look at accessibility, then uh, if you have kids at home or if you have like somebody to take care of, you have a dog, um, you are from a developing country and you can't just easily travel uh, from India to the US, then uh, having a virtual conference and to be able to participate in a scientific event uh, is really uh, useful to you. Uh, and also kind of if you talk about going virtual, the, the kind of the scientific kind of paper track can be established where kind of you have a poster just referring to previous work and you can also kind of neatly archive everything um, in a virtual format, which you can't, so it's much harder to do this if you have a, an in-person event. But then kind of, uh, um, as you might be aware, if you've tried to organize such an event, it's really hard to organize this. There's a lot of technical stuff you need to worry about. And often you kind of need to repurpose solutions intended for the business world. So kind of there is no proper authorship declarations. It's hard to kind of use the UIs to relate work and so on. And then also there's a significant cost factor associated with it. And in addition, uh, it's, kind of, it's a question that always pops into my head when I see a scientific poster like this. Why are we still using this for virtual uh, posters? Because uh, it has, uh, it's not indexable. Like if I am visually impaired, I cannot read all the information because uh, it's in an image file, whereas it could be text. Uh, I can't really index it. Uh, and it's just, it's not really made for reading information on the screen. It's just an image. And uh, we could have, much nicer things. So we could have uh, 3D visualizations, for example, here uh, down below the this, this interactive molecules. So kind of if you look at proteins or something, then uh, it's much easier to visualize a protein in 3D than in 2D on an image. You can have interactive graphics. Uh, you could even have executable code. So there's a lot of things that kind of could go into uh, virtual posters to kind of make exchange of knowledge uh, in a kind of conference format uh, much nicer than just kind of talking about a 2D image um, virtually. And uh, during kind of my OLS journey, I, I built such a system where you can kind of have everything in one tool. So it's an open source conference management system where you can sign in using your rocket. You, you have kind of, built, as an organizer, you have kind of built in inclusivity tools. So kind of there's a code of conduct already in place. You can to modify the parts that are relevant to you but should be pretty uh, much ready to go you have kind of some protection against kind of zoom bombing or these kind of things there is uh, integration of pronouns directly so everything is kind of built for inclusiv inclusivity there's um, kind of features such as kind of a time zone aware scheduling you have an abstract management there's this poster session that can use uh, posters as i described before confusing interactive visualizations and so on and uh, you can one click archive the whole poster session uh, and the talks on the nodo. So you get a DOI for each individual contribution. They're all linked to relevant uh, work that people that upload the poster can specify. And uh, everything is kind of organized for, uh, for the future, uh, basically forever. And in addition, you also have a newsletter management. And uh, for this, I was rather quick. I want to thank my mentor, Emily. And uh, I think I can show you some. Uh, some demos, so you should be able to see my screen. Uh, so here, this is, for example, the scheduling page. So you can see it has determined that I'm in Switzerland. So my time zone is set as Europe Zurich, but I can kind of easily change this to, you know, if I'm in New York, I can quickly change this to New York, and then the schedule will kind of easily um, update. 
and also as a conference organizer. So I built this, this, this nice little scheduling tool. So you can see you can schedule the conference in your, your local time zone, and then all the times will be converted to UTC in the system. And you can preview them either in UTC or if you kind of if you think about kind of conference that unites scientists from the US and from Europe, you can kind of uh, change the, uh, the preview time zone as well. So if I want to see uh, how my conference schedule would look like in Abidjan in Africa, then I could just kind of easily uh, change this. And you can just kind of drag and drop uh, the events uh, and uh, kind of change, uh, change stuff and uh, really easy to use. Um, see who is the rest. Um, if I, yeah, so. This, this is then how the post session looks like. So everything is also interactive. You can kind of look at the posts in a list or in a compact representation. And uh, if I kind of check out the poster, then uh, you can see that. Uh, I, so it will be asked if I want to share my webcam and my, my audio. Then I can, I can chat with people down here. I can share my screen. But also I can look at uh, the poster, kind of, which can be, for example, a Google Slides presentation. It does can be interactive. And if I want, I can kind of change the. Uh, the size uh, of the poster or the uh, the video session, and then you can see, for example, here the I, all the, the people they are kind of identified, and if they enter pronouns, for example, then they're kind of consistently used uh, across the um, the system. And then there's also this feature of kind of highlighted posters. And I finish soon, uh, so um, kind of to to guide people around the poster session, you can kind of set. Uh, Posters to be highlighted at a specific uh, time, and then kind of people can kind of uh, subscribe to those notifications, so they can kind of check out posters at specific times. And then they are guaranteed that the poster presenter is uh, kind of present at that time. Okay, that's that's it. Thank you, Simon. So exciting! Uh, wonderful to see all the features. Uh, all the uh, sorry, virtual applause. <laughs> But yeah, just wonderful, wonderful to see that to see that demo um, and and the different features and so thoughtful. Um, I think Malvika said and and just a great platform. Um, and so, uh, folks, if you have any questions, where I see two in the comments already in the pant, um, so please do continue leaving them there. Um, but for now, I think uh, we should move on to the next presentation, and I'll hand over to Yo. Awesome, thanks, Emmy. Um... So I will, I will get I will get tongue tied on a live YouTube stream. That is what I will do. I, I will present the next two, or I'll host the next two. So the first one um, I'm going to be asking to present. Anshika, would you like to present on newbies in bioinformatics? Yes. Um, is my screen visible? Uh, we can see. Uh, the, it's a bit quiet. Like if you uh, if you can get the microphone any closer to you. Um, now you can see. Yeah, now you can hear me. It's a bit windy, but it'll be okay. Okay. Uh, so I think I should start. So the topic of my OLS3 project is newbies in bioinformatics. So people involved here is me uh, and my mentor Yo Yehoti. So the 16-week uh, OLS journey was amazing, and I've learned so much uh, here. And finally, it's graduation. So. Firstly, uh, I actually, I wanted to create a tool for variant interpretation uh, for interpreting variants in DNA. So I started researching about it, looking for similar tools and they're working. So I got stuck because of technical jargons, insufficient detail in GitHub issues and not having in-depth knowledge of the subject. So uh, as you can see, there's a host and it was GitHub, which was just chasing me because I was not very comfortable using it. So the next thing is that as a beginner, I in bioinformatics, I realized that it was an impractical task to do. So we dropped the idea of this and uh, we have uh, now like what next? So you have suggested like, why not you address the issues that you are facing as a newbie in bioinformatics and try to help others uh, it is, who are getting into this field. So we come up with an idea of uh, Newbies in Bioinformatics, which is a website uh, for with a motivating and guiding space for beginners to learn bioinformatics. So uh, the motivation is the, to guide people from non-technical background to use computational tools for their research, building a community and making bioinformatics a more inclusive field. 
So the main aim of the project is to promote bioinformatics amongst beginners and uh, to discuss challenges and biases faced by beginners in bioinformatics, uh, to provide insights from experts in bioinformatics to motivate learners. So achievement still now is that we have submitted an abstract for bioinformatics open source conference 2021, and I have received open bioinformatics foundation event fellowship uh, for attending uh, this conference. And uh, the next is uh, getting involved uh, to accelerate the growth of community and contribute to newbies in bioinformatics as an expert, intermediate, or a newbie. Please get in touch at newbiesinbioinformatics at gmail.com. Uh, you can contribute by writing guest blog or through interviews. Uh, this is the uh, contributing guideline. If anyone wants to go through it, uh, you're you welcome to join us. This is the source code of the website. Uh, this is the website link. And a special thanks to the contributors, Yo Yehudi, Sadeep Kumar Dhanda, Ankit Kumar, Prashant Surajala, and Emma Karun. And thanks to the OLS team, Yo Yehudi, Malvika Shirn, Emmy Sang, Piridis Patut, and the entire OLS community. And Thank you so much for the attention. Uh, can I give a quick demo? You have two minutes, so go for it. Okay, so this, uh, this is my website. So it doesn't have much content right now. Uh, it basically has three blogs. The first is about the challenges that uh, addressing the challenges that newbie faces and uh, uh, an open invitation anyone who wants to contribute. The next is uh, our guest blog by Yuya Hoti about getting started with Git and GitHub for bioinformatics newbies for any open scientist. So as you can see, it's an amazing blog. The next post is about an interview with Dr. Sandeep Kumar Tanda, who is a translational bioinformatics uh, research scientist at St. Jude Children's Hospital. And like we have discussed about every question that a uh, newbie has in their mind about uh, uh, what challenges they face or like what uh, what is the future of bioinformatics and what, how we can uh, uh, choose a college for masters of a pursuing phd and like what is translational bioinformatics and that's it this is my whole uh, website right now. incredible folks can we have a huge round of applause for anshika I, I am absolutely unbiased as uh, the mentor for this project that I'm so proud how far you've come, Anshika. Um, folks, uh, bring add any questions or comments in on the etherpad um, and we are going to hop on to the next person. So, Batul, are you ready to present on uh, Open Science Community Saudi Arabia? Yeah, I'm going to share the screen. Um, please let me know if I go over time because I'm not good at timing. Uh, we will. You'll, you'll, hear a, you'll, you'll, you'll hear a bell. <laughs> Good. So I am Batul Marzouk. I am a computational biologist and I'm going to speak about my project, Open Science Community in Saudi Arabia. So the motivation behind this project is there was no any open science resources or communities or articles in the Middle East. And obviously there is no infrastructure for like open science. And most importantly, we don't have a lot of the vocab associated with open science also does not exist in Arabic. And Arabic is the spoken language in Saudi Arabia and in many countries in the Middle East. The second thing is the research system in these countries is in you, which makes potentially a science easier to implement. This is because it's not like in the West when you have mature culture that's hard to shift. Here, basically, young scientists can work to build the practices of open science from the ground up as the system grow and implement them. So um, this is make it easier to implement open science practices. And we also have in Saudi Arabia what we call Vision 2030. And I always speak about it. Probably you've heard me speaking about it before. And this is a framework that focuses on transforming Saudi Arabia service sector, such as education and infrastructure. And one of its main focus is uh, enhancing knowledge and improving equal access to education. So open science practices does align with Saudi Arabia Vision 2030, which make it hopefully easier to implement. 
So we had different version of the vision and the last one is taken completely from the international network of open science communities, which is basically creating a place in Saudi Arabia where newcomers and experienced people can interact, inspire each other to embed open science practices. We also wanna derive the creation of policies, infrastructure and support services here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so moving to the timeline, in January 2021, we created the first uh, organization repository in GitHub, we created the Zenaudio account, and we delivered the first token, in the Sharia data community, which is part of the Saudi data community. The Saudi data community is the largest community for data scientists here in Saudi Arabia. The talk was mostly about how you can apply open science practices uh, in machine learning. Uh, then in Feb February 2021, we delivered a workshop. This is a practical workshop. It's not like speaking about the theory. We have this Women in Data Science Conference, which is a big conference that spanned eight days in Saudi Arabia. And we had a four hours workshop speaking about how to do collaboration in GitHub, how you can apply different type of licenses. How can you, like every participant have the chance to create a release in GitHub and then link it to Zenodo and upload and create an DOI. Uh, moving to Marsh, I had a conversation with Luke, who was very interested in the experimentation of applying open science in the Middle East. And we joined this international network of open science community. I think Emmy can speak way better than me about it. And this is a network that started in the, in the Netherlands uh, in Utrecht, and now it does expand it to 11 locations in the Netherlands. There is also in Galway and Ireland, there is another one in Sweden, and we are here in Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. So moving, getting involved with this network make us reflect in our vision and our aims and our road mapping, what we want to do. do we, do we just want to create uh, training and delivering talks? Do we want to do other things? And one of the things that we came up that we want to support the growing of other open science community that potentially can grow and people here in the Middle East can interact with. And one of these is the carpentries. I'm certified, I am certified carpentry instructor, but there is like there is no visibility for the carpentry here in the Middle East. And most people just, uh, we don't know each other. There's one or two in different countries. We don't know them. So what we did, we made an effort to reach every certified instructor that reside in MENA region. MENA region means the Middle East and North Africa. And we had our first meetup for the local community. Um, after that, in May, we matured more. We started making different work in a group, one of them for translation. We also created the website, but we we just waiting for the translation of it. it's already launched. Uh, we also gonna publish a preprint soon about the initiative, about um, all the vision, the aim, the road mapping, the theory of the change, which is one of the highlights that I've learned from the cohort calls and from also my discussion with Anolda. Um, so few things that I've learned from the Open Life Science Program, I've learned about the agile project management, about the goals and the road mapping. These things that I, did not pay attention to before. And now I'm not just applying it in my community, but also I'm applying it in my own project. I also learned about open hardware verification of mature data and mature project. And we're doing some kind of verification of some of the open data that we have now in Saudi Arabia. Um, the theory of change is one of the highlights. It's a game changer for me, learning about it. Uh, and that's, so because of that, we can really take all these talks that the cohort call and we're going to cut the mini talks and translate them to Arabic and upload them in a new channel. Um, we also have a few projects about the verification of Saudi data. We have two abstract that have been accepted in the USR conference, one of the incubator, one of the metog. We also trying to publish more articles, Arabic articles in local newspapers, in local magazines about open science. And hopefully we can publish a preprint soon, that, as I said, about the, uh, about the initiative in general. I'm very conscious of the time. So this is the most important part actually. Uh, so this project would have been 
impossible and would have never come to life without the help of Anilda. It's not because just of the wealth of knowledge that she provided, but also she provided a unique perspective about open science outside the global north. Uh, I also had a lot of conversation with many people inside the community, like Laura, uh, Rina, Alexander, Thomas. Thomas, I think he's going to give a talk uh, in the open science the conference, we spoke about the different challenges about applying open sciences in the uh, outside the global north. And and I, I still go back to these notes from time to time. Um, I also have uh, Sarah helped a lot in creating the local community for for the car ventures in the middle region. Um, Malvika, she provided a visibility for the community by adding some of these activities inside the newsletter of the Turing Way. We're also going to translate some section from the Turing Way guide to Arabic. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Please do reach out if you have any suggestion, any contribution. This is Twitter account, and we have every all the materials in Zenedo. And thank you so much. Did I go over the time? I think I did. Just a little bit, but we still okay. give a huge round of applause anyway, because it's <laughs> incredible to watch. <laughs> Great job. Um, yeah, so I think we are going to move on to our next sets of talks. Keep questions, comments flowing in on the Etherpad, folks. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to post these also in the chat. Um, we will relay those as well. And if you are one of the presenters, please do look at the Etherpad and answer any questions that may be um, happening in the Etherpad. Uh, with this, I'm going to pass it over to Berenice to present the next two. Yeah, thanks, you. Um, I'm really happy that the next talk is from Michal. So Michal was my Monty there. So I'm really happy that Michal, do you want to present? Yes. No? Yeah. Can you share the screen? And you. So hopefully it works. Hopefully, do you see the presentation? Yeah, now it works. Perfect. Perfect. OK. So thank you very much uh, for uh, opportunity to present here. Uh, my project is called uh, Fermefil. And I will, uh, I will start with a bit of motivation. The main motivation is the, that uh, data is the uh, next big, big thing in open science. And uh, we are focusing on uh, data when, uh, when uh, preparing our, our strategy on open science. Uh, I'm representing uh, VGRDMCZ group uh, that's uh, joining, that's some kind of uh, semi-formal group of uh, people from research institutions uh, in the Czech Republic that uh, works in the area of uh, research data management. Uh, I am uh, particularly uh, from the Masaryk University. And uh, here at Masaryk University, we have a SATEC Institute uh, that's uh, uh, focusing on uh, uh, functional imaging uh, of uh, human, human brains. So uh, we are working with medical data, uh, et cetera. And uh, we are trying to work uh, with uh, these data in a fair, fair manner. So we have a, a Fermafil project. That's project of uh, one particular laboratory at uh, SATEC. Uh, that's a laboratory uh, that's uh, focusing on uh, neuro, uh, neuroimaging of uh, human brains. And uh, uh, we are trying uh, to uh, update the uh, workflows and pipelines in this laboratory to at the end produce data that can be published and shared with uh, other researcher around the globe. And uh, what's important aspect, I think this laboratory is kind of service, uh, service laboratory that provide uh, services to customers, other researchers that don't have uh, appropriate experts, appropriate uh, laboratory uh, staff, appropriate uh, machines, equipment. Uh, so if we, uh, if we do it right, we will be able to uh, do verification of data, not only for our laboratory, the internal, internal data, but also all the data that we produce for the customers. So I think it's important aspect and uh, make it uh, more useful. Uh, what uh, are inputs and outputs? Uh, as uh, input, we have uh, some 
pseudonymized uh, imaging uh, data. That's uh, these are series of uh, images of uh, human brains. We have some metadata about the subject, the, the people, uh, the images uh, belongs to, and uh, some metadata about the experiment itself. What, for example, what was uh, stimulation they have seen when uh, when the images of the brain were were taken, etc. And what we want are anonymized and validated data in some kind of standard format with uh, standard standardized uh, JSON metadata and fair description of this data set and everything uh, stored in some uh, repository that uh, the data set is citable and is available to everyone around the world. Uh, around the world. So that's what we want to do. Uh, we are a small team uh, with uh, two parts. One part are the brain guys, so the, the people that, uh, that uh, understand the neuroimaging and uh, knows uh, this uh, specific stuff. And uh, I and uh, my colleagues are from, from Institute of Computer Science. Uh, we are trying the technical things about data, fair standards, and et cetera. So we are cooperating uh, at the university and trying to, to improve, uh, improve uh, things. And uh, what uh, OLS uh, helped us, uh, especially uh, we had a regular meeting with uh, our ment mentor. Thank you. Uh, we also get uh, uh, contacts on, uh, on uh, some experts from uh, areas uh, we uh, need help, especially, uh, especially neuroimaging and uh, anonymization of uh, data in this area. And uh, we also had uh, at the, the university level a workshop on uh, anonymization of uh, research data. So uh, this uh, workshop is also public. So if you are interested, you can uh, you can uh, see that. And I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks, Nishat, and perfect in time. Uh, thanks a lot. So a big round of applause for Nishat. Thanks a lot. And... I'm really proud of you. Thanks. And so next uh, speaker is Antonio. Are you ready? I, yes. Yeah. Uh, let me just share. Uh, OK. So um, I'm Antonio, the project lead of DinoPipe. Um, DinoPipe is a reproducible nanopore Python pipeline for metabarcoding. Um, and my mentor was Hans Rodolf Potts. Um, so with increasing uh, applications of long read sequencing real time, uh, such as Nanopore, uh, it, it, it basically gives uh, more advantages over short read sequencing like Illumina uh, for sequencing in real time uh, micro communities. Um, there are a lot of standalone uh, tools and algorithms that can process this data, although they lack a better integration, flexibility, and reproducibility. Therefore, the aim of Pipe was to build a Python pipeline, uh, a modular Python pipeline to process this data. Particularly, it includes the following models, the multiplexing, uh, quality assessment, quality filtering trimming, polishing recorrection, taxonomy classification, and diversity analysis although currently are not all of these implemented. So this is the, the, the design of the pipeline. Uh, currently are implemented four uh, main models that are the quality control, the filtering and trimming, uh, the taxonomic assignment and uh, diversity. Um, each one of these models can include uh, many different tools or, or only one. Uh, they can be easily uh, installed uh, with Miniconda 3. Uh, and at the end, you can, uh, after you process your data, you, you have a model or a script that can uh, grab all the log files that are generated when you run each one of these scripts. And you can build an HTML report with all the command lines used, the date, the versions, and the reference of these. The main outcomes are two HTML reports, uh, one with the results, with the taxonomic and diversity results, uh, with, the, with the results embedded in the report, as well the, the code used for, 
for producing this, these reports. Uh, and the other one is uh, a report basically with all the scripts that were used and the command lines and dates, as well as this reference and versions of the softwares. There is also a, a GitHub page uh, with all the documentation of the, of the pipeline, as well as a tutorial um, that others can easily follow, uh, inclusive the installation of, of the pipeline. If I have time, I can just do show. So this is the, the HTML report that you, you get at the end. So you can basically, uh, you have the, the versions of the tools that were used. You can see the code uh, that, you, that you are using. Uh, you get some this interactive table where you can search, for instance, if you have pseudomonas or other species. Uh, in this case, you don't have. Um, you can basically have some plots that you can download them locally, um, as well other kind of analysis. And you also have this uh, HTML report that describes all the command lines that you have used during the, your pipeline, um, as well as the reference in the end. Um, and so with this, uh, I end my presentation and I would like to acknowledge, of course, to my mentor by all the advice and support throughout the OLS3 uh, program, Hans Rudolf Otz, also the external advisor, Ricardo Ramiro, by all the advices and support, and of course, the OLS3 organizers, Aranis, Malvika, U and Emi for the opportunity, and also for all the the great talks and, and, and support through, through the program. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. And um, big round of applause. Nice. Thank you. I think I end it to Madvika now. She will present the next, uh, the next, uh, the last presentation. If you have still questions, feel free to, to, to put them in the etherpads and then you can see if we have some time at the end. Here we go. Thanks, Bernice. Yeah, wonderful talk. Like, I don't know how you all managed to do that in such a short amount of time. I'm going to move on to our last speaker today, Hilia, uh, who has been working on the project boosting research visibility in Indonesia using preprint. Um, Hilia, are you ready? Thank you, Malfika. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. So, oops. Right. Uh, can you can you see my screen? Can you reshare it? Uh, right here. Right. Can you see now? Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you all. Our uh, project is boosting research feasibility in Indonesia using preprint. The team is Didi Kutomo, Hilia Tuzaro, and Zenita Mila. They all are here and our lovely mentor, Ivasi Puebla. Um, what drive us, the review process in journal could take months and making research outputs not immediately accessible. And the other needs a um, feedback on papers at early stage. And then many local journals struggle to get good papers here in Indonesia and also lo local and regional best research output net platform to boost its visibility. Sometimes um, when it's local and regional best research output, it's difficult to, um, I mean, to get to the international journals because uh, they really focus on the uh, problem on local settings and original setting. Um, and a uh, unique value proposition that we proposed during uh, earlier stage of our development is uh, we want to connect others with publishers and we want to include uh, language especially uh, i mean to include any language local language especially our national language bahasa indonesia and then also include content uh, in, uh, inclusiveness and like accept abstract poster and also data especially local data from Indonesian research. 
So what we have done so far, this is the timeline idea and conception. We created the canvas as suggested by OLS. We use this um, uh, OLS um, template uh, and IRATC as our mentor provide a very uh, durable feedbacks here. And um, these are uh, some of the, um, uh, I mean, our ideas and conception at that time. So, and then uh, we also research the market, uh, trying to figure out how big is the preprint market in Indonesia. And then we, at that time, we found out that Indonesia actually has already a preprint server named Brain Archive. Um, and then we also, bef but before that, we already hired IT and then created a website for our preprint because at that time, uh, we also talked with Irase what makes it, uh, I mean, uh, Irase also pointed out this um, issue that uh, there's, a preprint server already in Asia, and then uh, we argue that actually we have a different vision and mission than uh, that we uh, at that time we were concerned whether we could uh, join them, or whether we could join force, or we could. Um, mm, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, in, involved in the sailing ship. I mean, it's already moving. So uh, this is our pre the website that we have developed. Um, the, the the design of the website and uh we, our idea is to have affiliate journals uh to to i mean to back up the preprints that that's that's how i mean connecting journals with the uh manuscript in the i mean the papers in the preprint um also at that time we were supported by clinic journal and then uh we reach out, uh, the third step is to, we create the event to raise awareness about open science and preprint and also uh, created a community. Uh, in this regard, we we collaborated with Rin Archive, with uh, Dasapta from Rin Archive, you on um, organizing workshop on open science. And also uh, from the workshop, we we were able to create a community. We created on WhatsApp and Telegram. The workshop itself uh, attended by 67 plus people. And also uh, the WhatsApp group itself consists of 100 something, uh, 160 something uh, uh, attend, I mean, people. And then also the Telegram currently, uh, we renamed the Telegram to Open Science Green Archive. Uh, at, at, at the beginning, we only uh, named it Open Science Community. And then uh, after that, we talked to expert to move things forward. And then um, thanks to Irat Say uh, that facilitated the meeting with Joe Huffman and Johansson Obanda from Renar from African Archive. Uh, we learned so many things from them, including their experience and key challenges in developing African Archive. And to be honest, uh, we learned so much uh, from African Archive. It really opened our uh, eyes and mind about the complexity of the uh, server that they um, run. And uh, there's a key message that Joe uh, leave to us that it need to be mindful of resources to sustain and based on this we are uh, we talk to uh Rin archive team uh, especially uh, to the sapta erin irawan and we we uh discuss with him about our aim and purpose and goals and then uh he encouraged us to join force with Rin archive so uh and then after that, uh, we agree, and then we collaborate and join force with an archive. And uh, this is the meeting with the SAPTA. And then uh, currently, uh, Didik and I serve as moderators for Rin Archive. And then Zenita and I also help with uh, the Instagram and Twitter of Rin Archive and the community of Science Terbuka Indonesia. Um, so this is a... Um, the Science Terbuka Indonesia is the same uh, community of people that run Rin Archive. So we will also have preprint months. Yeah, uh, we're we're over time. Can you wrap up? We'll probably come back to you in the question as well. Um, 
Can we, oh, okay, okay. So, and then what we have learned so far, collaboration is key success for long-term goal to establish open science in Indonesia. And then uh, well, how, how will us help our project is the network beyond our network. And we're really thankful for that. And uh, we're really thankful for supportive and knowledgeable mentor and community. And we will continue, we'll uh, regularly continue to meet. I know this is not, um, I mean, uh, um, from the OLS, it's not uh, necessary, but we really appreciate uh, how Iran say still wants to <laughs> keep in touch with us. Uh, so special thanks to OLS organizer, Yu Malfika, Berenice and Emmy, and then our mentor, Iran Say Puebla, for all the great support and uh, for everything during this uh, journey. And then Ren Archive team and the Sapta Erwin Irawan, and also our Africa team archive. Uh, Jo Hefman and Johansen Obanda. Thank you very much. So, As always, very impressive. Uh, let's give Hilia a round of applause. Amazing work. So we have managed to save some time, probably one minute per project. And I'll go through some questions that people have. Let's see, we'll, we'll start with the first speaker, um, Marta. We don't have any question, but people are uh, people really appreciated how much you've made the reach. 150 people registered, and also the use of graphics very informative. Uh, does anyone have a question specifically? Okay, if not, uh, you can connect with them uh, informally. I'll go to the second speaker, Simon. Simon, you have a couple of questions. Uh, one was, what about DOI assignment for posters and abstract? Uh, maybe you already covered that in Zenodo, for example, do you create Zenodo community for each conference that everybody gets different DOI? Yeah, so I, I answered in the uh, document already, but uh, yeah, so the idea is because on Zenodo, a community can have, um, so you can add metadata for a community, so you can say what the event was, when did it happen, and so on. And then uh, in this community, all the, the individual contributions would live and each individual contribution has its own DOI. And you can also update uh, that. So whenever you kind of, on the website, the people up the update and you upload a new, new version of the poster, then you can kind of shuffle that back to, uh, to Zenodo and then uh, the DOI will update as well. And then you is not asking a question, but we can ask that as a question. Do you think we can use your platform for next graduation? Yeah, possibly, yes. So I'm, uh, I'm using Jitsi, which is an open source video software. Uh, so it would support live streaming to YouTube. Uh, but I think uh, I'm pretty sure they don't kind of have some, if you if you not, if you don't want to pay, then you have to uh, kind of, uh, you cannot use uh, transcription software that you can kind of trans transcribe the, the speakers. Uh, That's helpful. We should probably uh, book in, book a demo with you. I'm going to Anshika, uh, who presented newbies in band bioinformatics. Um, my, it, I don't think there's any question here, but uh, the, the comments are that it sounds like a very safe space for newcomers to learn, ask questions, and share. Great work. Uh, also, I thought that I would connect you with Bioinformatics Hub Kenya in Initiative because they were also trying to do something similar in Kenya and connect with you, Emma, but I think you've already worked with Emma. Is there any question? Do we uh, do we have something for Anshika? No. All oh, great. Please keep follow her uh, Instagram. Um, for Batu, uh, people just really were floored by the amount of work you've done. You might have already read that in the chat. It's just incredible amount of work, and we really hope that people join forces with you and help you continue doing that. Um, any question for Batul? Okay. She's also on Slack. Uh, Batul, I think, yeah, just every time blows my mind when you talk about your work. Um, Misha has already left and will convey that his work is very impressive. For Meta Nanopipe, uh, there's a question about demultiplexing, but I see that has been answered by Antonio, but I wonder, Antonio, you wanna quickly sh uh, share that for the streaming? Yes, yes. So the multiplexing is basically when you 
uh, tag each sample with a small barcode or index uh, and use you sequence these samples together in, in one sequencing run. Then later, based on the, that barcode sequence, you can basically say these read come from sample A or if it has a different barcode, it came from sample B and so on. That's it. Thank you. And also, I would I would back that up. Whoever wrote that as far merging genomic research, it's really great to see something would have uh, something like that would have made my work more reproducible, which I completely agree with. I think in my time, everybody were creating their own workflow and it isn't sustainable. So great work. Uh, finally, for Hilia, uh, your vision and plans are very clear. Everybody really loved uh, that you reached out to other servers um, in, in the same space to find out sustainability and challenges. Um, can you share a bit more plan around that? How would you proceed? Do you, do you drop the website that you've developed or do you want to continue developing that in association with REN? Yeah, so we will drop that and then uh, we'll continue. Currently, we will uh, develop um, together with Rain Archive. I mean, uh, promoting the use of Rain Archive in Indonesia as a single preprint server in Indonesia and make it uh, bigger. Uh, so we work with them as the moderator and also promo promotion team uh, behind Rain Archive. And we will also do the preprint months together with them. And uh, in in the future, it doesn't uh, it doesn't close the opportunity that we will uh, have a spin off of the Rain Archive, for example, or some kind that is more specific to field, for example, like uh, for biology, for uh, or other so for example, like social fields and or other fields. Yeah, that's what we talk with them. <laughs> Really great. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. You all have done so much work that we couldn't have imagined ever. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it to you to wrap up and close. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to go fast because I have another meeting in like 40 seconds. Uh, so folks, um, goodbye to everyone on YouTube. We are just going to do wrapping up with a call, um, so with a group photo. So I'm going to end streaming.